means we're going to tell the accounting department, hey, uh, you're going to debit cash and then you're going to credit unearned revenue, not revenue, because it has not bet yet been earned. And then we in the adjusting department will determine how much has been earned and write that down. So this account is going to be the one that we are using that I'm going to make green. Then there's going to be some account down here uh, below the blue line on the income statement related to this adjusting process. And in this case, it will be revenue. So we're going to adjust unearned revenue and revenue, the amount of the revenue that has now been earned. So uh, we know that the revenue account is an income statement account and they only go one way. They go up and revenue here has a credit balance. So how do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So we're going to credit revenue. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it on the bottom, even though I don't know the number yet. So there's the letter. I'm going to put it on the bottom in C9, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Then if that's the credit, then we're going to have to debit something. And if the only other account is this one, then that must be the debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. One, two, three. Now, so we can know which way it's going if we can determine those accounts without knowing too much more about it than that. Now we're going to discuss a little bit more about it and what numbers should we put in there. So we have discussed a bit that this account represents that we have unearned revenue as of this time period, meaning we debited cash. We credited unearned revenue because we had not yet earned the revenue for something such as a concert or something like that. Then we're determining that at this point in time, uh, 8250 is what the unearned revenue should be at this point in time. And we currently have 11000 in there. So we need to bring this to this amount here. So once again, that's going to be a subtraction problem. So what do we have to bring 11,000 down by to get to 8,250, the amount that we determined is still uncollectible. So there we can do that over here. Once again, we're going to say what's what's in there right now, 11,000. And uh, what we have now determined it to be is 8,250. If we subtract that out, then this equals the 11,000 minus the 8250 means that this 11,000 needs to go down by 2750 in order to get it to 8250. Now, if this is a little confusing to you, you might want to think about it writing it down algebraically on a piece of paper. Sometimes writing it down can be uh, very useful. So if you just wrote down on the piece of paper, what we're, what we're doing here is we're trying to say this 11,000 minus x minus what will bring it to equals 8250 and then you can do the algebra on it but notice it's it's either going to be an addition or subtraction problem for the most part because we're dealing with addition and subtraction problems here it's going to be a subtraction problem to find the difference in this case and then we can post it and see if it does what we think it should do what do we think it should do it should bring that down to what we determined it to be which is 8250 so we're going to say that this is journal entry is going to be 2750 for both the debit and the credit, which I'm going to say negative left once, up once, and enter. Then we're going to post this transaction to the adjusting column here. So I'm going to go to the H14 right there equals, and we're going to point to the 2750. This is a credit. That's a debit. They're the opposite. Therefore, this is going to go down. Did it go down to what we think it should? Yes, it did. It went down to that. So that, that will be our check right there. If it doesn't, if it goes the wrong way, then maybe we added and we should have subtracted in our calculation. We'll just flip it and do it the other way and see what happens. So then we're going to report the other side here. We're out of balance, of course, by that 2750. So in H16, we're going to say that equals and point to the credit. That's a credit. That's a credit. It's going to make the credits go up, it's going to make us back in balance, and it's going to make net income go up. So there we have that, and we are back in balance here. So now it's, I'm going to un, uh, highlight these so we can move on to the next one and repeat the same process with it. it. says, the cutoff date lands on a Wednesday. Employees are paid on Friday. Therefore, as of the cutoff date, employees worked three days for which they had not yet been paid, represented by the following amount. So first, let's see if we can just see which accounts will be affected, and then we'll break that down. So we're talking about wages in some way, salaries or wages, and there's going to be one balance sheet account above the blue line and one below the blue line, which will be an income statement account. What's going to be the balance sheet account up here related to wages or salaries or employees of some kind? And we see wages payable probably looks like a good 
one, two choose. So I'm going to make that green. And then below the blue line, there's going to be some account related to wages or salary or payroll or something. And we see it's going to be an expense. It's going to be either an income or an expense down here because that's all we got on the income statement. And it is an expense of wages at this time. And we know that uh, expenses only go one way. They go up. The employees don't generally pay us. So how do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. This happens to be a debit because it's an expense and all expenses are. So we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it on top because debits generally go on top. And then we're going to have to credit something. And we determine that the only other account affected is wages payable. Therefore, wages payable must be what the credit is. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that on the bottom like so. Now, uh, so once again, we can see which way the accounts are going just by uh, looking at which accounts will be affected without knowing really what's going on. Now, now let's talk about what's going on. So wages payable, we can see, is in the liability section with the liability areas and the expenses, obviously, and expense. So if in a, in a payroll system we pay employees on a Friday, um, then they're, they're working before they get paid, clearly, in that situation. So it doesn't make sense for us to be on a perfectly accrual basis, which would mean that we would have to accrue the fact that they worked even though they didn't get paid every minute or every second or even every every hour. So what we're going to do is the payroll system will generally be on a cash basis, meaning we record payroll when we pay it, and we record the expense when we pay it. But as of the cutoff date, we want it to be as correct as possible in terms of an accrual basis. So we will make the adjustment for the fraction of a period that has been has been earned that not yet paid. So for example, if we um, the pay week ends on a Friday, but the cutoff date, the end of the month, the 31st of the month, happens to be on a Wednesday, and there's a five-day work week. Well, there's been three days then as of our cutoff date in which that we need to record the payroll that has not yet been recorded so that our financial statements will be right on an accrual basis. Again, it's not like the bookkeeper did something wrong in this case, or the accounting department, because it would not make sense for them to accrue constantly uh, perfectly correctly, but it does make sense for us if we're going to make the financial statement as of the cutoff date to make it right as of that date by adjusting for that. So what we're going to say, hey, there's three days that we need to expense as of the cutoff date that aren't going to get paid till next month or next pay period, and that amount amounts to 2500 Now, in this case, there's nothing in wages payable already, so we don't really need to do a calculation on that adjusting entry. We know that we're going to expense 2500 That's the amount that we determined was uh, the expense for the three days that has, has not yet been paid. So we're going to expense 25 for th those three days, and then we're going to credit wages payable, meaning the wages payable are going to go up because uh, we owe those employees that money for the three days that they work, which we will pay them on Friday in the normal payroll process. So if we then post that then, we can go down here to H17 and say equals and then point to the expense 2005. This is a debit. That's a debit. It's going to make the debits go up. It's going to bring net income down. So there we have that. Now we're out of balance here. We're going to go to the H13 equals and point to the 25 credit there. And that these are credit balance accounts. That's a credit. It's going to bring the liability up in the credit direction, put it back in balance here. And so there we have that. Note the effect on the net income through this adjusting process. Most every adjusting entry will affect the net income for the most part. So